Dear scientist, in this video you will get a deep understanding of the mitotic inhibitors structure, function, and resistance. Subscribe to stay updated on cancer biology. We divided the video on two levels, beginner and intermediate. Let's start with the beginner level. Mitotic inhibitors is one of the five types of chemotherapy that is used to treat cancer patients. As you can see, we will use this symbol instead for the sake of illustration. Cancer cells are constantly dividing, but when the mitotic inhibitors are uptaken by these cells, they inhibit their division and lead to their death. Now let's move to the mitotic inhibitors structure. There are two types of mitotic inhibitors, Vinca alkaloid and taxines. We will include vinblastin as an example of the vinca alkaloids and we will use paclitaxel as a representative for the taxines. Let's see how each one of them functions inside the cell. All mitotic inhibitors are hydrophobic and diffuse through the plasma membrane of the cancer cell in which they encounter a structural protein that readily assembles and disassembles called a microtubule. The microtubules can rigidly bind and attach to the chromosomes and subsequently they can move it based on the cell need. Paclitaxel, which is one of the taxines, binds rigidly to the assembled part of the microtubule, inhibiting its pulling action. On the other hand, vinblastin, one of the vinca alkaloids, leads to the disassembly of those microtubules. Let's see what happens in a normal mitosis during the cell division. First of all, the microtubule assembly needs a center that is called a centriole. And during the division, each cell has two centrioles. The centrioles start to radiate the microtubules that will attach to the chromosomes on both sides. The pulling and pushing actions of the microtubules will align the chromosomes in the middle of the cell. Upon the alignment of these chromosomes, the cell allows their separation into two sister chromatids that are evenly distributed on the two daughter cells. However, in the presence of paclitaxel, the microtubules assemble to grab the chromosomes. However, they are not able to disassemble to align the chromosomes in the middle and the cell will be locked in this position. In a similar way, vinblastin will lead to the disassembly of those microtubules preventing the chromosomes to align in the middle. The excessive delay of the mitotic phase will eventually lead to the cell death. Congratulations, you finished the beginner level. Now let's go to the intermediate one, but before that, don't forget to help our channel by pressing the like button. First, let's discover the structure of a microtubule. Each microtubule is consisted of one alpha subunit and one beta subunit. Those two subunits polymerize layer by layer as shown to form the microtubule. This process is called polymerization. On the other side, you can see microtubules disassembled by peeling off from the center in a process called depolymerization. Now let's return back to our mitotic inhibitors. As we mentioned before, vinblastin is one of the vinca alkaloids and vincristin, which is discovered right after vinblastin discovery and it has less cytotoxic effect on the myeloid cells and this is why it's used in combination with anti-metabolites or alkylating agents. Now let's get more familiar with the taxane family. The first discovered member of the taxanes is the paclitaxel after which doxytaxel was discovered. Doxytaxel has a double number of nails in each hand because it has more cytotoxic effect on the cancer cells. However, this anti-tumor activity leads to an increased manifestation of side effects. 
Now let's move to the resistant mechanisms by which the cancer cells were able to overcome the cytotoxic effects of both families. We will tackle the most common two mechanisms. The first one is a mutation in the vincocyte or the taxin site, a mutated beta subunit in general. This mutation will prevent the binding of vimblastin or bacritaxel, preventing them from doing their function. And the second mechanism is related to the ABC transporter expression through which the mitotic inhibitors are excreted out of the cell. Now let's move to a comparison between the antimetaboloids, the alkylating agents, and the mitotic inhibitors. In terms of the mechanism, the antimetaboloids interfere with the DNA replication process by being inserted into the DNA damaging its structure. The alkylating agents mainly cross-link the double-strand DNA which inhibits both the transcription and the replication. The mitotic inhibitors interfere with the mitosis preventing the chromosomes from aligning in the middle. In terms of the cell cycle, antimetaboloids interfere with the S phase for the alkylating agents. In most cases, their mechanism of action does not depend on the cell cycle. The mitotic inhibitors mainly target from their name the mitotic phase. Regarding the tumors that are targeted by these families, the antimetaboloids target the tumors that have fast dividing cancer cells. The alkylating agents can target both the fast dividing and slow dividing cancer cells. The mitotic inhibitors, like the antimetaboloids, target the fast dividing cells. Congratulations, you have successfully finished the two levels of the antimitotic inhibitors. If you are interested in cancer research, always check in the description for premium courses specifically tailored for you. And for now, what do you think which is more effective, the mitotic inhibitors or the topoisomerase inhibitors?